Thank both of you so much for joining us this evening. I want to start with you, uh, Dr. Dominga. Uh, so the situation in East Africa, as I said, we, we've concentrated so much on this war in the Ukraine, uh, which, of course, is a you know human rights and a civil and everything else, uh, a horrible situation. But at the same time, this Tigray rebellion that, we're see, uh, that we saw in Ethiopia, which still is not fully settled, over 600,000 people died, and we did not get a peep out of U.S. media on or any coverage. And at the same time, in this situation in Sudan, they're still doing this trauma porn for Africa, where it's like, oh, those poor, war-torn East Africans can't control anything, instead of talking about the level of international influence in this geostrategic location. Uh, can you talk a bit about why we do not concentrate on the ongoing situations in Africa, unless it's through the lens of Europeans and the lens of, uh, of the American military-industrial complex? Well, you made so many great points. I'm just now, as well as before going into the break, one of the things I say in my song about uh, Congo is that the Congo's so poor because it's so rich. All the minerals and the whole world, they want it. When you go back as far as the, you know, the 1800s and you look at things like the, the red rubber in and, and the early 1900s, where people were getting, you know, exploiting places in, in Central Africa, particularly the Congo, for, for bicycle tires, for companies like Dunlop and the like, going all the way up to now, where you look at what's what you're talking about in, in Sudan, as well as in other um, countries in, in Eastern Africa and Central Africa. The reason why there is a vested interest is not building up and talking about the people is because there's a vested interest in, in, in pimping Africa for all of its resources. These countries have enough to feed not only the entire continent, but the entire world. When you look at all of the minerals that are in our, our phones that we're using right now, the tin, tantalum, the tungsten, the coltan, the, the copper, that make all of our electronics runs, those come from these same areas. But the media is only primarily talking about what's going to happen in terms of getting the Americans out. The reason why we don't know about what's taking place there is because if people knew, if particularly black people throughout the diaspora knew that these were our people, that this was part of, that we are part of a community that should be working to embrace our brothers as opposed to, and sisters as opposed to running away from them, that would have to force people to change the entire narrative. And when you see what's happening in places like the Sudan, when you see what's happening in places like Congo, we also have to be mindful of the fact, and you said this earlier, that there's a vested interest in supporting dictators and leaders that are going to keep African countries unstable. We should be mindful. When we come back to Congo, we had a dictator who outlasted seven U.S. presidents in Mobutu Sese Seko. Who discovered him? George Bush Sr. in 1957, who said, I think this could be our guy in the Congo. When you look at somebody like a Rwanda in, in, uh, in, uh, with Kagame, you see that this is a person who's been propped up by the United States, who's been, whose army has been trained by the ACRI, the African Crisis Response Initiative, who had carte blanche to be able to go in and take take over two-thirds of the Congo, and then partnership with Museveni in Uganda, almost take over the entire country and become exporters of minerals that they don't even have in their country. So I, I, can, I, I really want to go in on this, but I, I'm just saying at the end of the day, we have to be mindful that these strategic interests are found in everything that we utilize daily that comes from these war-torn areas. So we have to go beyond the mainstream media and find out the deeper connection that they don't want us to know. 